today, we're getting ourselves closer to hanging Arabella's planks, but we have quite a list of projects we'll need to finish first. There are a few things to build in the boathouse. We'll modify some of our tools to help with the job, and then we'll start fairing the rabbit. Thanks for joining us, and we'll get right into it. So to get ready for planking, we need to build some planking benches because um, we're going to scarf the planks together and that means that we need to do upwards of 40 foot planks. Um, so to handle those, to do the scarfs on those, we want to build some planking benches. So that means a trip to the local lumber yard um, so we can go grab some plywood and some 2x8s and some 2x4s. Um, and for this, we have a bunch of lumber that we milled for staging and stuff, but honestly, we used the vast majority of it when we built the second floor. So there isn't even enough left over to uh, do these benches. So uh, we're going to get those knocked out so that we can very soon get to hang in some planks. With the planking bench completed, it's time to move on to the scarfing jig. We will be gluing our planks together with Resorcinol and a 12 to 1 scarf to make full length planks. To cut those scarf joints, it will be much faster to build a jig which the power planer will sit in and use that to cut all of our scarfs. Basically, the planer will sit on a jig with two sloped sides which it will ride on and will guide the planer to cut the same shape each time, a perfect 12 to 1 slope on each end of the boards. So Arabella has basically all of her frames and all of her floors, which means the next real big task is planking. Uh, so we're starting to lay the groundwork for that so that when we get to planking, we have all the tools, all the equipment's ready to go, and we can just get to work. Uh, so one of the things that we need to do is get ready to back out and scrub the planks as we put them on. And what that means is we have a frame here that was one of our culls, and we have a uh, board that basically is around the same width as our planking. So our planking will be four to six inches, this board is five inches. And what happens is the plank goes onto the frame, and if you see here on an outside corner, the plank doesn't sit flat. It wants to rock, and there's a little bit of room on either end. So what we need to do on this plank is we need to back it out. So we need to take a little bit of material out of the entire middle of the plank so that when it goes onto the curve, it sits flat. And depending on where it is into the boat, we might need to take that out of the middle, or we might need to take it out of the outside edges. So if this were the other way, say it were the turn of the bilge, the plank would go on like this, and we have a gap in the middle. So what we need to do is scrub off the outside edges of the plank a little bit so it sits flat. Now, if we need to scrub off the outside edges of the plank, we can do that with a normal plane or a normal hand plane just by holding it a little bit of an angle and just smoothing it off. Taking the material out of the middle, which they call backing out, is a different story. Uh, so traditionally you would use a wooden plane with kind of a rounded sole on the bottom, or you can take a modern power plane and modify it, and that is what we're going to do. If you've been following us for a little while, and I hope you have, uh, you've seen this bad boy in action a bunch, and this is our Bosch planer. We had a Makita one when we started, and it was an older version, and it just kept throwing the blades on us. So we went and bought this one. And one of the cool things about this Bosch, and a bunch of other manufacturers, it's not just Bosch, is they have a tiny little razor blade for a blade. So when you switch out the blades, there's no tuning, there's no sharpening. These are pretty cheap, and they're double-sided, and the planer only has one of them. So you just undo a couple set screws, slide the old one out, slide the new one in, tighten it down, and you're back in business, which for us has been fantastic. Um, the only real issue with it is that you are limited to 
a straight razor blade. This is not a good plane to modify because as you can see, you really don't have much to work with. So we went and picked up a newer DeWalt and it has the same style blades that the Makita had. So it has these big chunky blades. Um, you can resharpen them, which is really nice. But when you put them in, you've got to adjust them and get them to the right height. And it's not nearly as quick and smooth a change over as the Bosch. But the pro of this style blade is that for us, we can modify it. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take these blades out and we're going to put a bit of an arc in them. And then we can use them very well for backing out. So I'm going to start with just wiping the back of these off with some acetone. And the reason for that is they come with an oil on them, uh, which is great. But it's just going to make marking and working on them a little more challenging. Um, so we'll just wipe that oil off. Now, it's absolutely imperative that whatever we do to one blade, we do the same exact thing to the other. Because uh, if the curves are a little bit off, one blade's going to end up doing uh, all of, if not most, of the work. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark one of these first, get it ground, get it cleaned up, and then we'll use that as a template for the other and make sure that we match it absolutely perfectly. Um, so whatever arc we do on the first one is not super crazy critical, uh, but we just need to make sure that we match the second one to it really, really well. Uh, we also need to make sure that we don't put too much of an arc in them because there is clearance on the machine. And if we bring them too close, uh, the blades are going to start to hit. So we're going to do about an eighth of an inch on these. So I'm going to start, I'm going to find the center and then measure down an eighth of an inch on either side. And then we'll use this bit of bandsaw blade and just spring the curve, mark it, and I'll take it over to the grinder and grind it. So now that we've marked our arc on one of them, we can take it over to the stationary sander and we'll put it on there 90 degrees and just take off the corners just about down to that line into a nice smooth arc. And then we can use that one to mark its compadre. And then once that one's ground, we can very, very carefully sharpen them, uh, doing our best to make sure that we keep that, that nice smooth arc that we put on them. So real quick before I throw these on the sander here, <laughs> I'm just going to take the file and just knock the edges off and hopefully we won't rip through the sandpaper when we go to, to do this. So we're just going to So that's all we're really looking to do. Just put a little bit of a radius in it. I'm just ever so gently touching it, pulling it back, touching it, pulling it back. And this never, I mean, it barely got warm. And that's exactly what you want. Um, you'd be really careful with these machines. They take off so much material so quickly, um, which one is an issue, but two, they can make this really hot and they can ruin the temper in a split second. Um, so you shouldn't see any color change. It should never really get hot to the touch. Uh, it's just really, really light, gentle touches. So we cut our arc, and what happened when we did that is we ended up messing up the bevels in the corner here. And if you see on the face, there's the main bevel, and then on the very edge is this really shiny secondary bevel, and that's the part that we really care about for cutting. Uh, this main one seems to be at about a 45, so that's what we have this set for. And what we're going to do is just take off these edges here until we're, I have a line all the way across. And we're almost to it. We're going to leave it just ever so slightly dull. And then we'll finish up on the stones. Because um, if we go all the way on this, we're likely to burn the edge or actually just grind the edge away. Um, just very gently going to put it on there and rock it back and forth until we have a nice smooth edge. And then uh, we'll be able to finish up sharpening it. All right. We've got some sharpening stuff here. So we got these and their arts and their primary bevels are on. And now we'll do the secondary bevel by hand. So I'm going to establish that on the diamond stone here. And then just clean it up on this double-sided Norton a bit. And I'm not going to go super crazy with these. They don't need to be like hand plane or chisel sharp. They just need to be pretty sharp. Um, so we're not going to stress about it too much here. Never had to hone a blade this angled before. This is challenging. Mm. 
Not to mention its size. <laughs> oh, get rid of that burr on the back. Uh, I think it'll be fine. I think I'm honestly, I'm gonna, I think doing this by hand with the level of skill I have for hand sharpening tiny curved blades, which, you know, first time I've done it, so it's not exactly high. Um, yeah, I think trying to put the secondary on it, I just have more of a chance of effing it up. And I think with the 220 on the grinder there, I mean, that's a really crisp edge, lap the back. I think that'll be fine. And with how easy it is to touch it up on that, I think we can just stick with the, the primary. Sounds good. The secondary, really, it just helps the edge be a little bit stronger and makes it faster to sharpen. But doing it on the stationary sander, I'm not really worried about faster sharpening. And with how light of cut and what we're actually doing with these, I don't think the extra little bit of strength that it's going to gain gonna really is, is going to be a big difference. So. Cool. I think we'll just leave these as that. That'll do. That'll do. That's at zero inches depth of cut. <laughs> I think that should work. The other thing we can do is back this off a little bit. Uh, the blades just drop, them down. just drop them down because right now this is set at zero and we're still cutting that much These are sticking out that far um, It won't change this But it will change the depth and then by changing the depth you can then connect a bunch of shallow ones mm -hmm. And make it shallower does that make sense? Yeah, it just won't be smooth. It'll be smooth enough for our purposes. I mean, that's almost right for up there at the turn. Cool. I think that'll work. And if we don't like it and we find it's too aggressive, it's really not going to be too hard to pop them out and just reduce the arc a little bit. And if we totally mess up those blades, we can just order new ones. We've also started laying out our planking stock. These boards will end up becoming our garboard and hopefully the first couple of broad strokes. Six, that's all well better that. And this one's probably maybe both again. Twelve inch. Five inch. Maybe six inch. Okay, six inches. Okie dokie. Uh, we can probably fold that green tarp in like half and throw it over these. I just want to keep the sun off them as much as we can so they don't go all cattywampus on us. The next step for us for being able to put the planks on Arabella is to f do the final fairing on the back rabbit here and the base of the rabbit. And the rabbit is the groove that the planking is going to nestle down into. So we need to make sure that this is all really nice, smooth, and fair. And we've got a little bit of work to do there. Um, so we'll start with the ads and the power planer on the back rabbit here. And we'll use some battens and get that smooth and fared out. Once we're happy with that, we can drop down here with the rabbit planes. We can register against them against the back rabbit and then just bring down the bottom edge of the rabbit here so that it's 90 degrees to the back rabbit. Once that's all smoothed and fared out like that on both sides of the boat, we'll be able to put in the bronze hull strapping, which we'll get to later. Uh, and then once the bronze hull strapping is in, we can start hanging planks. Um, so today is just going to be a, a bunch of checking things with the battens and trying to get everything nice and smooth and fair. So let's grab some battens and the ads and get to work. You're full of wood chips. Yeah, this is why my entire life is covered in wood chips. <laughs> the laundry, my bed, everything. It's all covered in wood chips. I'm 
working on fairing out the uh, back rabbit here in the stern. And initially we had a pretty good hump here. So I've got rid of most of that with the power planer. And as you can see, that fit's starting to fit pretty well on there. Um, we're still a little proud here. And the other thing is the rabbit is not quite deep enough as it is. So we need to bring the rabbit in just a little bit and then we can shape this all back just a little bit more. But we're getting pretty close. Unfortunately, with the power plane, I can't get down here all the way. So I'm gonna have to switch over to the ads and work that a little bit until about the point where the fid fits in there at the correct depth. And then I can switch back to the power plane and kind of clean out and get that smoothed out. And we're just trying to go about the height of this fid, and that'll be high enough that we can get that first plank in there with, without any fuss. In order to fare the section out, we had to dub one of the frames a little bit. We'll need to do this several more times along the boat. It's only a small amount of material and in no way compromises Arabella's structural integrity. There's a hump there somewhere. Probably in that last frame it looks kind of like. But it's also... Yeah, I think we're going to get to that when we yeah. start putting the broad strikes on. And if we need to just shave down a little bit to get it fair, mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. I just want to get the real, real rough work done. Mm -hmm. Get it down to where we go to put the plank on, and it's like, oh, 16th here, 30 seconds there, yeah, eighth of an can, inch here. Because we can dub as we go, too, and it'll be much easier to see how the plank wants to fit on there, too. And where exactly the high spots are. Yep. Yeah. This, like, I don't know, initially consider that like getting those within spit and distance. Mm -hmm. And this one's closing that up a bit. Cool. All right. And we'll keep working forward. So, I don't come from a line of boat builders, but somehow my family has owned this old compass plane for I don't even know how long. But I remember being a little, little kid, like knee high to a grasshopper. And this plane lived on the windowsill at my mom's house and was missing the handle. And I used to love picking it up and watching the bottom move and like all the kind of engineering that went into making it. I just thought it was so cool. And then I started woodworking and it never had a handle. And it was never really that functional without the handle. And then it was like last year, my grandfather came down with a big box of old rusty tools and dumped it out on the bench and wanted to know if any of that would be useful to me. And lo and behold, the handle was in there. Uh, so I just had to replace the screw. But it was great to put this old beauty back to work.
trying to bring everything down so that we don't have any bigger than like maybe an eighth of an inch discrepancy. And then we'll clean all of that up with the hand tools and do a little more, I'm sure, final tuning as we hang the garbage. This is down to hand plan in here, Casey. And we've got like 15 minutes now before we gotta go do that podcast interview. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up here, but I'm pretty well fared up to frame G here. Okay, well I'll just keep planing uh, up to that point and call it, wrap it up, call it a day. It had been a long day of hacking with the ads and the chisels, but late that afternoon, we came back to soak the areas we had worked on with linseed oil. This will keep the wood from drying out and checking. Well, uh, the other day, actually, what day is it? I think it's Saturday? Saturday, right? Today? Yeah. Yeah, the video went out yesterday, so it must be Saturday. We kind of lose track these days, which is kind of nice. Um, so that would be Thursday then. We did the back rabbit on the starboard side, and that was seven hours of ticking away with the ads and cleaning all that up. Uh, and my elbows were a little sore at the end of that. So yesterday we did a bunch of filming and some house cleaning stuff, and. Gave the old elbows a break, and uh, today we're back at it. And the first thing we need to do before we can clean up this back rabbit here is get rid of this offending screw. So when we put the ribbons on, we had to tack them into the back rabbit, um, and a couple of those screws when we went to take them out and that hard oak, they broke off. Now I've had this issue before, um, not so much on the boat, but just other times woodworking where screws have snapped off like this. And one trick that I found that I really like uh, is to use a really just cheap um, plug cutter and get them at the local hardware store and I find the U shape with the simple cutting edge to be the most durable for this and I just slowly start it around the screw. The starting is the hardest part and then I just chase the screw back and if the screw is short it'll actually come out right in the plug and if not I'll drill down to the depth of this and then usually I can get some pliers or vice grips on it and finish twisting it out. And then you just take a drill bit, ream it out a little bit to clean it up, put a wood plug in it, and you're good to go. Uh, so let's see if we can get this puppy to come out. So I find getting it started is the, the trickiest part, but once it's going, it's pretty easy. I've never had this much trouble, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. They're always a little finicky to get them started, but they have never, ever given me this much fuss. Uh, it's something about you, camera. I don't know. It's everybody watching. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So, yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, sometimes getting it started is a little bit finicky. That was the most finicky it has ever been and probably the hundred times I've done this over the years. Um, but once it's going, you can't, you just chase it and you gotta make sure that you have the right angle. And that's where this U channel 
kind of cutter is nice because as it goes around, you can see the screw and you can just make sure it kind of rides in that channel and doesn't get kind of off center. Otherwise you can catch the bit and break the bit in there and then you're even more of a world of hurt. And it eats up these bits. So this one's getting kind of dull. This has already done this a few times, but. And there it is. So like I said, when it's a short screw like this, they often come right out in the plug cutter. If it's a longer screw, I'll just take some vice grips like these and just get in there and grab it. And usually by removing this much material around the screw, you loosen its grip enough that you can grab it with the vice grips and get it to turn out. At least that's been my experience. Uh, and like I said later, not right now, but we'll go through and we'll just ream this out a little bit because this cheap plug cutter leaves a pretty ragged hole. Uh, and then we'll just put an appropriately sized plug in there. And when the planking goes on, it'll never cause any issues. You'll never even know it was there. Um, so yeah, now that that screws out and I got one out up here earlier, the back rabbit's free and clear of obstacles and uh, we can get to work. We, uh, can we get out here? No? You have the entire boathouse to lay in, and this is the spot that you choose. Not ideal, Doug. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Just like, uh-huh, not listening. <laughs> All right. Thanks, bud.